Hi, I'm Robin Geimer. I'm Professor of Ophthalmology at the University of Melbourne and Deputy Director of the Centre for Eye Research Australia. My particular area of interest in research is in age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And I'd like to explain a bit more about AMD today so that when you start to learn about our research, it becomes a bit more easy to understand. The retina is this, like a film in the camera. It's the bit that takes the light and is transferred into a stimulus that goes to your brain that makes you see. And if this is the eye, then the retina is at the back. And the macula is the centre part of your retina, and it's responsible for fine central vision, so reading, needing to drive, recognising faces, you need your macula working. And that's right back here. And in AMD, unfortunately, without any intervention, that part of the retina gets destroyed. So if you think of AMD now as a continuum of disease, the very beginning is where perhaps incidentally you have your eyes checked and an optometrist or an eye care professional will tell you that you've got some early deposition of debris or ageing material in your retina. They are called drusen and they define the early stages of AMD. It's sort of like having found to have blood pressure but you haven't had a stroke or a heart attack, you just have a risk and thus drusen in the back of your eye gives you a risk of losing vision. And the two things that can happen is you can get bleeding at the back of the eye, called wet AMD, or you can get little holes where the, the cells die away in little moth-eaten holes called dry AMD. We don't really know the underlying cause of AMD, but we do know that as you get older, with every decade, you are at increased risk of getting AMD, and that there are many little gene changes that can increase or decrease, in fact, your risk of that disease. So often it runs in families. What we do know is central to this disease is a problem with getting nutrition and oxygen and everything that the photoreceptors, the cells that receive the light, need to be healthy. So to explain that a little bit further, I've got a little cooking demonstration for you. So, if you think of the photoreceptors needing to see the light, and they need to be supplied by blood, a blood supply called the choroid. But unfortunately, in the middle of those two things is a little membrane called Brooks membrane that separates the two. So if you think of my piece of bread, raisin bread, as Brooks membrane, when you're born, it's pretty porous and you can get oxygen and nutrients to come through and supply the photoreceptors. But with every year of age that you age, you get, unfortunately, this butter, this fatty deposit build-up in Brooks' membrane. It gets thicker and it gets much harder to push water, oxygen, nutri nutrients through it. So it's like putting more and more butter on this piece of bread. You can imagine hard to get stuff through it. On top of this is a layer of nourishing cells called the retinal pigment epithelium, and I put some good Australian Vegemite on that because it we feed it to our children because we think it's got, it's got lots of um, vitamins and minerals. So that's our retinal pigment epithelium that sits on top of our Brooks membrane that gives all the good nutrition and um, things that the photoreceptors need. And underneath, we have the blood supply, which I represent with tomato sauce. Like any good movie, you have tomato sauce for blood, and that's sitting in our choroid. So this is the area that's... Uh, um, involved in age-related macular degeneration. You can imagine this layer of cells does not like having all that fat and debris between it and its blood supply. So if these cells don't get what they need, they die. And that's really what dry macular degeneration is. Little bits and pieces come out. I describe it as moth-eaten holes. But you can imagine the vision is not going to be so good in the middle if you've got holes in the vision and that's dry AMD. The other one, wet AMD, is where this blood vessel layer doesn't stay where it belongs below Brooks membrane, but sneaky little blood vessels push through Brooks membrane and leak and bleed and cause tomato sauce or blood to destroy this layer and the photoreceptors on the top. So one way researchers, including ourselves, are trying to see how can we slow the progression from the little fatty deposits to the end stage disease is to try and get rid of all this debris, fatty deposits that are building up in Brooks' membrane. 
So some people, including ourselves, have thought to use lipid altering drugs. So you may know them as statins, they lower cholesterol in the blood, or other newer forms of tablets that might alter the lipid profile of your blood that could help clear out some of this uh, build up of lipid back into the blood supply and out, out of the body. So that's one way. And the other way is to try and perhaps use a laser that has been traditionally something we've used in retinal diseases for a long time, but to use a very gentle laser to try and actually potentially make this layer do its job better to clean up this debris. And so we look very much forward later this year to describing our study using a laser and uh, us and others around the world are trying to see how best to clear that debris by those sort of mechanisms. And I guess the third way people are trying to get a better layer of nourishing cells is to transplant them using stem cells. So there is work in trying to just to replace this layer that, as we know, gets those moth-eaten holes. So th there are three different ways that currently researchers are trying to slow that progression of AMD because at the moment, whilst we have the ability to stop the bleeding, there is no way that we know really that can slow the progression from those early stages, which may take years to decades to get to the end result of losing vision. At the moment, we're not quite sure how to slow that down. So very excitingly, there's all these different approaches that are aiming to clear up that, that lipid debris that's um, depositing in that layer. So I hope that makes it a little clearer as to the underlying thought processes of what's going wrong in AMD and how you might tackle uh, improving the outcome of that disease. If you'd like to learn more about our own research at the Centre for Eye Research Australia, we encourage you to visit our website at www.cira.org.au and uh, have a look and see what we do not only in AMD but in all the other diseases that affect the eye. Thank you very much and it could well be that next week our cooking lesson could be on diabetic retinopathy where I think perhaps meatballs and spaghetti might be how we would uh, demonstrate that disease to you. Thank you very much.